If you are someone who jumped on the WSL wagon a little early, even before Microsoft released WSL 2, and now you're looking forward to migrate from WSL 1 to WSL 2, then we can sort you out in this video. Microsoft has made it super easy to go from WSL 1 to WSL 2, and we can do this under five minutes. So let's start with why would you want to migrate to WSL 2? You can read the full comparison between WSL1 and WSL2 on the Microsoft official documentation. But in brief, what it means is uh, WSL2 includes some major architectural changes, which gives you faster boot time. WSL2 also includes a full Linux kernel. So earlier WSL1 was built on such a model where you used to have a abstraction layer or a translation layer for native calls. but with version 2, you get a full Linux kernel shipped with WSL. And then there is increased uh, file I.O. performance, full system call capability, and etc. etc. So it seems good enough reasons for you to migrate to WSL 2, because at some point, WSL 1 might get deprecated as well. So that covers why we should migrate to WSL 2. But now I would like to highlight one caveat as well, which is potential uh, networking or internet issue in the WSL 2. And I've seen this issue quite widely reported on the GitHub as well as other forums. Now, as far as I could understand, um, in a nutshell, the problem is that once you upgrade to WSL2, you would see a additional network adapter being added um, in your networking on Windows. And this network adapter seems to have some sort of conflict or bug uh, while working with other network adapters on your Windows host. Now, so far, I haven't come across uh, a precise solution for for making it work but there are some workarounds being discussed on the on the internet and i will take them in the next video all right so moving on i've already got wsl1 installed on this system and i've got a working linux distro ubuntu which is currently on wsl1 you can upgrade from wsl1 to wsl2 in just steps uh, firstly we will enable a virtual machine platform which is a windows feature via the control panel or you, that you can use a PowerShell command as well. Uh, second, you will install a new uh, Linux kernel package from the Microsoft site. And third, set the default WSL version to WSL2 and that's all. But before you do all this, you need to check and make sure that you have the correct Windows version or the Windows build version. So let's start by checking our Windows version using the WinWork command. Now I've got 20H2 here which is good enough, but you need to have at least uh, Windows version 1903. So make sure you, you have 1903, else just run the Windows update and update your Windows version. Now let's head on to control panel. Click on turn Windows features on or off. And let's enable virtual machine platform is here check this click ok and we are done the system will prompt you to restart so we need to restart i'll be back after the restart all right so we are back after the system restart and let's head on to our step two we will be installing the linux kernel update package from the microsoft site so head on to this url and download the linux kernel update package from here Once the package has been downloaded, just click to install, click next, and finish. So that concludes our step two. Now, as a last step, you would want to set the default WSL version on your system, on the Windows host, to version two. So you can do this from the PowerShell. So launch PowerShell as a administrator. Let's check the existing WSL version by issuing command so as you can see, I've got uh, Ubuntu distro already installed and this is on WSL version one. We will convert this distro uh, later on in this video to WSL version two. But for now, uh, let's complete the WSL two setup by issuing the command to set the default WSL version on this system to two. WSL set default version two, click enter, done. As simple as that. 
So with this command, we have uh, set up WSL2 on our Windows host. So from here on, any new Linux distros you install from the Microsoft Store will by default be installed as WSL2. But if you want to convert your existing Linux distros already installed on WSL version 1 to WSL version 2, you can convert the existing distro by using the command WSL set version followed by the distribution name Ubuntu and followed by WSL version which is 2. So this command will convert my existing uh, Ubuntu distro which is on WSL version 1 into WSL version 2. It might take a few minutes while it is converting your existing distro to version 2 and we are done. So let's uh, check once again. So as you can see we have got previously we had this Ubuntu distro on version 1 and now we have moved it on to version 2. So that's done. Now in my experience, I haven't encountered any loss of data while migrating the existing Linux distro from one to two, and neither does the Microsoft suggest any such kind of loss or data. And that's it. We have successfully upgraded WSL from version one to version two, and successfully migrated our existing Linux distros to WSL version two as well. And before I sign off, let me show you uh, the caveat which I was mentioning in earlier in the video. Um, if you go to your uh, network settings, open up the adapters, and as you can see, we after uh, upgrading from WSL1 to WSL2, you would see a additional network adapter here, which is a Hyper-V virtual network adapter. This will get installed as part of your WSL2. And if you're using some other virtualization softwares, like in my case, I've got VMware here, I've got VirtualBox, I've got uh, a Nordlynx or any, any other third-party network adapters, you might face uh, some issues from your Linux distros connecting to the internet. Uh, now, this is sort of a known issue and you can research on the internet. You will find a lot of tickets on GitHub uh, for WSL as well, having this uh, issue, especially in WSL2. So that's, that's the caveat I was talking about. Now, in my next video, I might uh, come up with some workarounds out of my research to show you how you can work around your uh, network issues once you migrate from to WSL2. But if you don't have any third party network adapters, hopefully it might work seamlessly. So that's all guys. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. See you next time. Bye bye.